music in general can be entertainment and we all need that but I think also an important um, element of music is also educating and moving people and sort of activating um, people's sense about causes and issues um, and so it can be a great tool to motivate people to bring about change in the world. Uh, no, there is no specific practice related to activism. However, because I identify as a black woman and my first identity as being black and I see everything through a black lens, I feel like it naturally becomes activism whenever I do create art. My art and my politics are always going to have to be at the forefront of everything that I do um, because existing is a political act for myself um, as an indigenous person who's queer. So, you know, I actually see, like, I run for Congress, so I actually see, like, my campaigns as art projects. Um, and it's all a part of my artistic career, so I really don't see a separation between the two. I don't think that, for me, they can be separated. So I think, you know, I, I reach inside and think what have been my struggles and um, there's a way that artists do that and connect to other people's struggles. Um, and it is really gratifying when there's some difficult things that you have been through as a person and then you can offer hopefully a different perspective on something that can maybe help someone make some connections in their, in their own lives. Art is like a coping mechanism for me because, again, it's another way to communicate, another way to articulate how I might be feeling that I can't put into words. I just don't and can't find the right words to verbally express how I'm feeling. So to be able to throw some paint on a canvas, to uh, throw around a brush, or to take some objects and piece them together is another way to help me cope with how I'm feeling. I'm a sober addict, so if I don't have my coping mechanism, it, it's really, really difficult. It's, it is everything. So even like today, I just showed you like six pieces that I painted on the fly, pretty much. Um, so I'm so stressed out over <laughs> everything. So it's, um, it's definitely like, I, I actually, I sit and think about instances where like that could be taken away from me or it would be taken away from me. And, you know, it's, it's sobering to think about and it's hard to think about, so hopefully it's not a situation we have to deal with anytime soon. Boy, it's been really healing for me to literally find my voice in singing and also in songwriting and realize that I wanted to say something in the world that was unique just to me and to get to record has been an amazing privilege. But also women are really underrepresented in the music industry. So I sort of feel like any time that I'm singing and I get the opportunity to perform, in some ways that's an act of activism because I'm saying, you know, I want more of us to be represented in this world of music. I want little girls to grow up thinking they can play music and other people will want to hear their voices and their songs as well. What actually drives me to do what I do? As an artist. As an artist. Again, it's another way to communicate, and I'm constantly, there's a voice in my head that constantly is speaking to me and responding, reacting to a situation, and again, I don't know how to verbally express it. So I have a strong desire to paint or to um, piece things together, and many times I see in objects something that reflects an emotion, like I really love rusty old things, and that's very earthy, very spiritual, very, and it just is another way to express how I might be feeling. Yeah, so for, at least for this show, we did a, a vending machine that has a copy of each of our authors, or each of the books that we've put out by each author. A lot of what I do is to try and make poetry accessible to the general public, and 
So as a vendor, as somebody who sells poetry books a good amount of my time, it's, <laughs> you know, people are like, oh, who wants to read, you know, oh, poetry. And I know, I know, poetry sucks. Like, I get it, okay? Like, <laughs> I'm a poet, I get it. But an another part of that is, like, seeking that accessibility. How do you get somebody interested in poetry that doesn't give a shit about poetry? It's like, well, you give it to them in the smallest doses that you possibly can, right? So if you're going to be running around and you see a vending machine like quick easy cheap you can <laughs> like throw it away immediately if you need to like it's not an investment to you but what you get out of that is the investment which we hope that people realize that once they get it I think that's one of the best things about art is that it spurs on conversation and engagement and artists come to their craft from different perspectives and that is a gift to the audience or the listener to perhaps see something from a different angle and that might challenge you and then you might dive in deeper and become more educated on a topic or a cause and that might lead you to more action to help improve conditions for yourself and other people. Art is just, a, to me, a really great opportunity to be able to keep certain conversations alive um, and in the forefront, really important, tough topics. And art, whether it's visual art, whether it's theatrical art, performing art, is a way to have the conversation a, a bit more safely because you don't have to engage in a two-way conversation, right? So the person experiencing the art doesn't necessarily have to express how they are responding to it and don't have to fear being judged about their response, right? They have the opportunity to, to basically just take in what they're seeing and experience it themselves. Yeah, like I ran my whole campaign on I'm here to have those difficult conversations. I don't really shy away from conversations. Um, I feel like a lot of people do, and it's really detrimental to society. Um, I don't really see a reason for it. I've been through a lot. I've had a lot of things happen to me in my life. I've had a lot of terrible things happen to me in my life. I've experienced a lot of amazing things in my life. And there's no reason to experience all of that unless you're going to be honest with other people about it. So I don't need to like sugarcoat anything. I don't need to you know, make things be in a neat little bundle here. It's, this is life. And it's not going to get any different. Like, <laughs> we're, it's always going to be life. And the more that we face it and talk about issues and bring things out in the open and don't let things get hidden in the dark, I think the better. This has been an incredible project, an incredible opportunity for me to give the opportunity to visual artists and one poet to um, get to portray these women that have inspired them. And I got to participate in, in many ways and do a concert around this topic. And I did a video about my song, Women Who Walked on Water, and get to participate in an artist salon about gender, art, and power. Um, and so it's just a really rich topic. I have content on my website that we've developed around this. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a continuation. It's just conversation will continue. And so by doing it, by creating the art, it continues to, the continues the conversation. So definitely, I, because I feel like if I am not creating art, I'm not having the conversation. So it kind of stalls. But by participating in this show and making time to create the art, it naturally is then giving me momentum to continue the conversation and inspire some additional work. This project is what I, is what I hope to be a catalyst in, in kind of us branching out uh, into more fast poetry, what I, <laughs> fast publishing, um, something that is still tangible which I think is important in our increasingly digital world is to still have stuff that we touch. And um, I also feel that it's important for us to have representation from local authors, artists, poets, um, that is easily accessible to everybody. Mm -hmm.